Hello and welcome back. Okay, so today I just want to expand on something that I did last week and that is to, to just show you how I like to use Steppy for performing. It's a really powerful uh, little sequencer here, just gate sequencing, but when you use it in conjunction with this uh, loopy mode, it becomes really, really performative. I really like it in this small case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a quick demo and I want you to pay particular attention to these six specific steps that I've got here. So just as a quick um, rundown on the case i do have stuff going on um, just off screen here with a bass line and a kick but i want to just focus on this we've got the bia but we're in this metal mode which i don't use very often so it's more a percussive effect side with a bass line going on behind uh, but i want to focus just on this case um, so that you can really understand what i'm doing here with steppy if you're really interested in what's going on off screen up here stick around to the end and i'll go into a wider shot and i'll just show what's going on with the bass line there because it is kind of interesting it's just a little bit messy so let's stay focused on this case Okay, so I'm going to go through a demo, pay particular attention to what I'm doing down here, and then afterwards then I'll go through how these six specific steps are set up differently for performance reasons. Oh, what I haven't said is um, what's going on here. So I'm on channel B here and B is sending gate for Basimilus here. I've also got channel D going into the Javelin, which is just being used as a simple envelope. So if you can't get hold of a Javelin, uh, this applies to any envelope. It's just the gate going in and an envelope coming out, which is modulating the filter here of carbon. So you can see here channel B, these are the gates that are going into BIA. Channel D, these are the envelopes that I've got going into the carbon carbon's in low pass mode and then i'm just using channel c here to trigger my kick and the kick's just off screen so i'll leave it in channel b mode here but then when we come back to um, go back and have a look through just how this is all interacting it'll be important to look at the envelopes here as well okay so back on channel b and um, pay particular attention to these six steps um, and then i'll walk through it afterwards <laughs> Thank you. 
I hope you enjoyed that. As always, I certainly did. It wasn't so much of a performance, but more of a demonstration of what was going on down here. So those of you astute enough might have picked up on a few techniques that I've been doing here, but let's just go through them one at a time. So one of the first things that I did performance-wise was I was playing this specific note. So, oh, for anyone that isn't aware, when you're in loopy mode here, instead of activating or deactivating any of these 16 steps, it plays the note that you're on. So if you're just holding one, it will play that specific gate across all four of the channels here and it will just play that specific gate. If you hold down two, you'll get a two gate loop or four. So one of the times I was holding down four and it was playing these. So yeah, it's really, really performative in that way. But when you combine using different of the outputs for different reasons, that makes it even more playable. So what have we got going on? So first thing I did, if we go to channel C here, which is just my standard four on the floor, I was playing this specific note, which if we go back to channel D, this has an envelope coming from channel T, so it'll open up the filter. And on channel B, which is our main gate for Basimilus, it'll also play a note. So it'll play everything and it'll give us a full kick drum fill. If you play two notes here, this will give you an every other note kick drum fills. So if you hold down two notes, this will give you every other kick drum fill. Um, but I just went nice and simple and just played the full kick drum fill. So here, the full kick drum fill opens the filter and plays the BIA. But if we look here on channel D, for the filter, notice how for this one, if I were to play this one, it wouldn't open up the filter. So the filter I tended to have here, I'm on low pass mode. So you won't hear much of BIA unless the filter opens. And when the filter opens, it uses this attenuation on the filter. So it will really open up that filter and you'll really hear it. But when it plays a note without the envelope, it will just play a very, very low muffled. So you just kind of get a slight effectsy feel in the background, but you won't really hear the note coming through. So let's demonstrate that now if I can. So I'm going to actually turn off the effects. I'm going to turn off all of the drums and the bass just so that we can just focus in on the BIA here and what's happening with Steppy. So let's just get this rolling. So here's the BIA track. This is track B. This is showing us all of our triggers for BIA. Now notice these four have triggers. And these four do not have triggers. If we switch over to our envelope, when I trigger BIA, this is also going to trigger the envelope, as is this one and this one. So both of these will play the same without the kick, whereas obviously this had the kick on channel C here on our four on the floor. This one here will allow the envelope, this will just keep opening the envelope every note. So if it's just played a note before on the BIA, this will just keep triggering that envelope and it will just keep going but the BIA won't trigger again. So the volume will fade, but then the, the pitch envelope will just keep opening. Sorry, the carbon envelope will just keep opening. So let's give that a go. So I hold down this one. You can hear the filter opening every gate there. Because if I hold down this one, the filter's going to have its envelope opened, but we're not going to trigger BIA. So hear how that just started to fade out there? But it has to have just played a note, so I have to time it just right. So I timed it there when the gate wasn't firing. And let's bring a kick in. If I hold down this now, it will give us a full fill on the kick. If I hold down two, I'll get an ev every other note fill. So that's quite useful performance-wise. And then, if we hold down notes in groups of four, it will still give us the four on the floor fit feel but depending on what envelopes, so you notice how we've got two envelopes here, one on the second there, every, every one of these is set up differently. So I can hold down just four gates and it'll give us a repeating pattern that's different for each one of these four. So let's try that. But you have to time it, otherwise it will go out of beat. That's useful for kind of breakdown section, maybe. So 
switch back to our BIA channel here. So if I hold down, when I hold down these two, I'll get a trigger on note one and three for both of them. When we go back over to our envelope, this one will trigger an envelope for each of the notes on BIA, whereas this one will only trigger the envelope in between. So you'll end up with a BIA firing, filter won't open, so it will sound muffled. Then it delay opens the filter, closes it, and then you get a, so you'll end up with a muffled to open to muffled sound here, I think. So let's give that a go. So that's where it's opening on both of the notes directly. Notice how that sounds very different. So yeah, there's four different ways that you can perform that bass on the envelope. What else can we do? And the other technique I like to use, especially in conjunction with switching up the CV sequencing here, which will just give us a slightly overall... I mean, I didn't do this in the demo because I wanted to just keep it nice and simple so that you could just understand what's going on here. But quite often, I'll just hold down this note. So this will open up the BIA for every note, but it will take the kick away. So it's useful for transitions. So let's try a transition. just switched up the CV sequencing. And go back. Okay, the final technique that um, I was using here uh, it's probably easier to demonstrate if I put the effects back on. So let's bring the bass in as well. Okay, now this one, this one's quite interesting. So what I'm going to do, instead of playing this one that opens up the filter, I'm going to play this one that doesn't open up the filter. If we switch back to D, we notice the filter is not being touched here. So what this is going to do, is going to trigger the BIA, but it's going to be very, I mean that filter is very low, so we're not going to hear a lot. And then I was manually opening up the filter, so let's give that one a go. So there we go, we faded out the BIA, you've got the bass line playing on its own. We're on note three, so the kick is also filtered out. And then we can just open the filter manually. But then when we release the gate, that's gonna start opening up the filter again. So as the filter's high, we're gonna get very high attenuation on the filter from the envelope. So we've really gotta pull this back again, otherwise it's gonna sound a little bit over, it's gonna sound a little bit over pitched. So as I release, I'll take the filter back. So that's why I really, really like Steppy from a performance point of view. I can't remember how many different points I went through there, but I'll just try and summarize some of them again for you. And then um, if you want to stick around, um, I'll zoom out to a wider shot and I'll show you what's going on in this wider patch. So to summarize them, we have the ability to do a kick fill, every other kick fill. We can take the kick out. We can take everything out. The bass line is not... I could have put the bass line on um, channel A here, but I've got that just going externally, just so that we can just keep that uh, bass line going nicely. We've got the ability to take the kick out and just play the BIA, which is really useful for transitions. And we can play the BIA without a filter, 
and then play the filter manually. So from what people generally see as quite a simple step sequencer, that's why I really like this. I generally just play it on 16 notes because then you can see everything. I and mean, this will go up to four pages of um, 16, so you get 64 step sequences. I tend not to use that because I like to see what I'm doing. Um, and it's so playable, it's such a good module. I love it. Every single little case uh, patch that I'm doing has Steppy in it. I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to do with this side yet because I rarely use MIDI. Uh, maybe have a second Steppy. Uh, oh, don't get me started, I'm not buying a second Steppy. Um, but I'd love one. Okay, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that. And um, if you want to stick around, I'm just going to play this through a little bit and then we'll jump out to a wider shot and I'll show you what else is going on. Okay, so if you're still here, then you're obviously interested in the bigger picture. As you can see, I've zoomed out into a slightly wider angle. I don't really have the setup to, to go this wide at the minute. I'm still working on a better studio setup with some decent lighting and a proper wide angle camera. This is the wider shot. So what have we got going on here? So as you can see, Metropolix is quite heavily involved. Um, ignore the Symphonia not doing anything, but we've got a Metropolix here. We've got the bass line here from the A1116, and we've just got um, a kick drum here. And and some snare uh, from the squid sample. But I've also been experimenting with a performance setup. As you can see here, I've only got a left and a right output coming from the ES9. So I'm looking at um, how I can create a stereo output for live performing. As generally, I'm I'm just recording multi-track. I'm into Ableton on up to eight of the channels on the ES9. So a quick rundown of what's going on here then. So we've already been through things with the BIA. We've got channel two of the Metropolis here, modulating pitch of the BIA, just so it's slightly in tune with the bass line. Channel one here is gating and pitch out to the bass line here and then the drums are just over here. Everything, including the BIA, so there's all cables coming around here, there's cables coming across here, and they're all going into this um, three-channel stereo mixer. So I've got the bass line going into the mixer, I've got all the drum output going in, and I've got the BIA going in. So I control the levels, just balance everything here, and then the left and right output are coming down into the muscle. So I've got a nice little bit of uh, compression on the stereo channel. So like I said, I'd normally do all this in post through the ES9 and um, Ableton, but I'm just trying to work out a stereo mix because I'm looking to start performing at some point. Quite nerve-wracking, but I've got to try and um, work out how I'm going to do this without a laptop. So that's why there's this slight higgledy-piggledy um, setup today. So let's just go through things then. Okay, let's turn off the BIA for now. And let's just start with our bass line. So just use, I love this synth as a bass line. It just produces bass lines with minimal fuss. Uh, so it's usually my bass line synth this. Uh, this is coming on track one. Track one here is an eight step track. Every single one of these pulses is at one. So it's just standard eight notes. Do we have any mutes? Let's just check. No mutes. However, we do have probability and we have some steps off. So step two and step seven are switched off. And then if we go over to probability, there's quite a lot going on here. So step two, it can ignore because it's in an off state. Step seven is in the off state as well. So probability on channel four here, very low and channel eight. So channel 8, the probability this will just give us uh, a random high pitched, I think it's the double octave at the end. But again, Metropolis is just very, very good for setting up bass line. 
Now the one interesting thing here, if we go to track two, which is sending the pitch uh, down to the BIA, track two is only a seven note sequence. So what this gives us is every eight repeats, the pitch will repeat. So it effectively gives me a 64 note sequence without having to create a 64 note sequence. It just slightly rotates every bar, just rotates by one note until it comes back to the back to the same. So let's just see if we can hear that. Quite difficult to hear with all this modulation going on. The way that this uh, mixer is set up is that you can send the first channel into the second into the third. So by default, it's playing channel one, which is the BIA. I've got a uh, squid sample percussion coming through on two, so I can bring that in just with a switch. And then bring the bass line in with the third switch. So yeah, if you decided to stay around and look at this wider picture, um, there wasn't a lot going on, which is why I was really keen to just focus on the small case. I know some people, they just see the small case and they hear more than they expect coming out of it and they think it's a little bit of a clickbait. Oh, it's not really a 62 HP patch. No, it isn't. I'm just the BIA. I just wanted to demo the BIA in here and I just brought some extra stuff in. So I'm kind of between setups. Um, I wanted to do another demo on this because I really, really think that the performance aspect of Steppy is worth is worth sharing with people. But at the same time, I was building a wider patch with the bass line. I'm also trying to work out how to create um, everything going through the mixer so I can create a standard output. I'm also playing with the compression here as well. So there's a little bit of pumping going on, not too much, but the compression does make it sound a little bit better. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I think next time I'm going to go back to a patch from scratch because I know everyone loves the patches from scratch. Um, so I'll probably do one, get everything in this slightly bigger case here um, and it'll be a longer format video, but that's one for the future. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.